Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and you find me today just next to this tree. This is a newly planted tree, just planted it yesterday and this is Magnolia grandiflora or also known as evergreen magnolia or bull bay. So this is a really valuable plant to add to your garden because it provides excellent architectural interest all year round. Um, it's got these lovely green glossy leaves and they've got these kind of rusty brown undertones under, underneath them which looks really really lovely. It produces these lovely cup shaped cream flowers which are big and get to about 25 centimetres across and they have a beautiful smell um, sometimes described as a sort of a sweet floral punch of like a rose but with citrusy lemon undertones. They come in about um, late summer to early autumn. Magnolia grandiflora tolerates hard pruning and can be trimmed to shape. It's a tree that works quite well growing as a pleached um, in a pleached avenue as well so if you're interested in that head over and have a look at our video we did on how to pleach trees um, but it um, tolerates hard pruning in fact it benefits from hard pruning because um, it will make the plant grow in a more bushy format. If you do grow it just as a freestanding tree it will reach an ultimate height of about 10 to 12 meters. If left alone Magnolia grandiflora growing in the British gardens tends to grow more broad rather than upright as it does in warmer climates which is fine if that's what you want but if you do prune quite vigorously that will help um, to create a more upright um, and, and a more upright tree. Magnolia grandiflora grows quite slowly so buy the biggest tree that you can afford. This one is a lovely specimen which we managed to get from the tree nursery that we went to. We've planted it strategically in this position. Um, it's out of the, the wind so um, it does give it quite a bit of shelter here. We've got the trellis behind. Um, because it's evergreen um, we thought it would be really beneficial here because we can take out the lower leaves as it grows and have just the evergreen canopy above and that will block out. This is rather unsightly to my left because this is all our kind of work area which we don't really want to see. So that's why we've planted it here. So when Magnolia grandiflora first came to Britain in the 18th century. It had come from the American colonies, so it seemed sensible to plant it in the warmest part of the garden. So it was often growing up against a wall, a south facing wall, where the wall would hold on and act like a radiator and store heat. But 300 years on, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that this tree can cope well with an open, a more open site. And, and functions and performs quite well in, in an, an open part of the garden. We'll head back in time to yesterday when I planted this tree and I begin by digging a hole about twice as wide and a little bit deeper than the depth of the pot. Magnolia grandiflora grows in moist, well-drained soil, chalk, clay, loam or sand. Although it will tolerate alkaline soils, it much prefers a neutral to acidic soil and will grow in sun or part shade. Grow in a south, east or west facing aspect, avoid north facing, it prefers a more sheltered spot. In cold areas it can be an idea to train against a warm south or west facing wall where the storage heater effect of the wall mitigates against hard, hard frosts. I'm hoping that this spot will be ideal as it's really tucked away out of the wind. Magnolia grandiflora are not suitable really for growing in patio pots as they will quickly outgrow their container. The soil here is lovely, much different to when we planted the other trees. You can see um, this area has had organic matter on it for several years and what a difference it makes. Look at how much more moisture retentive it is and less sandy than the other part that we've dealt with. So just dig around the hole just to loosen the soil. And then you'll see next to me there are two bags of ericaceous compost. Magnolias need a pH value between 5.5 and 6.8. Therefore, the soil should be slightly on the acidic side. It will tolerate a more alkaline soil, but it just won't really thrive. So it's a good idea at the time of planting if your soil isn't acidic. Ours is kind of neutral to slightly acidic, but I thought it would benefit just with a little bit more ericaceous compost. Because I don't want it just to survive, I want it to thrive. Then just deeply work in the compost to mix the two together. I'm just going to cut off some of the lower branches just to encourage them upright growth. I'm not going to take too many off because this one here has got the loveliest big bud and I'm just kind of dying to see what it looks like when it opens but probably in the future we will take off more 
lower down branches and that produces this denser growth is which is what we want pruning in spring seems to do nothing to inhibit the production of their enormous beautifully smelling white flowers all through the summer because they're relatively slow growing if you prune during summer which is commonly done with fast growing plants this will mean that you're cutting off the nice new growth that's taken a while to appear so it's just a bit of a waste they're also quite late to break dormancy so pruning should be done before this happens ideally late march or early april is is perfect Unlike some of the other trees we planted, Magnolia grandiflora don't like root disturbance. So although I am just checking the roots for any problems, I'm not teasing them out or I'm touching them too much as they don't like it. We will sprinkle it with mycorrhizal fungi as we've done with the other trees. And this just helps it um, be able to combat air periods of drought and just get its roots down and establish much more quickly. Next, we'll just put it in the hole and then just check, stand back and check the positioning. So we'll ask our resident expert what he thinks. What do you think, Murph? Yeah, he says that looks good. And while I fill in the hole, I'll just tell you a little bit more. So Magnolia grandiflora is fairly hardy. Hardiness H5, USDA hardiness 7 through 9. But here in the UK, it's often quite slow to establish, particularly in its first few years after planting. In May, when other trees are looking at their best, this tree may look a little bit sorry for itself. They tend to lose their leaves before the new ones are produced and therefore for a few weeks in late spring can look a little bit sad. An expression which is particularly true in the case of this tree is that May is evergreen's autumn. Magnolia grandiflora is sensitive to temperature. It's noticeable how much faster they grow and bigger in somewhere like London. And in the Mediterranean, they can reach heights of 30 metres or up to 100 feet. In rural gardens such as ours um, in Britain, their growth is somewhat curtailed, reaching, to, reaching about 7.6 metres or 25 feet after 35 years. It may take young trees a few years before it starts to flower. Many are grown on a grafted rootstock and so may take a little bit longer. But to give it the best chance, feed annually in early spring with a general fertiliser and prune in mid-spring if required. Mulch with compost in autumn. Although magnolias can grow in shade, they bloom best and most generously in full sun. If your tree is in sun but isn't flowering, then soil quality may also have a role to play. Performing a soil test can help explain why a magnolia tree doesn't flower. It is best to use rich, acidic, well-drained soil with a pH of 5.5 to 6.5. And this can be amended like we're doing with organic matter. If your soil is at all wet, improve drainage at the time of planting and be sure to plant quite high to encourage the water to run off. And as with all the other trees, we'll be adding a stake to this tree and also an irrigation tube just to aid watering in dry spells. So I hope that's convinced you to plant um, a Magnolia grandiflora. Thank you very much for watching. You'll see behind me that we have been quite busy putting in other shrubs and things. We'll come on to all of that in another video. And we've also put down lots of manure and things as well. So we'll come on to that in another video and we'll talk about some of the other things we've planted. But for now, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and join us in the next video. Bye for now.